It is a good morning. It is a good morning, and we are in overtime. <laughs> you having fun? I had so much fun this morning. But all good things must come to an end, and my wife said I have until 10 o'clock, or it's my ass. So <laughs> she's, being, she's being very, very flexible, okay? So at 10 o'clock, I have to escape here today. But that, that gives me enough time to hopefully instill into you uh, some things and some takeaways for this week. <clears throat> so, obviously, you can see that I just did a, a live stream on YouTube, and we covered a lot of details. We covered a lot of things that were not available to you at the time of me calling the market yesterday, outlining it, and then showing you the live trade, working with the information. <clears throat> but the the thing I want to talk about today in this Twitter space is when the facts speak for themselves. And I want to touch on a few things here and kind of like remind you what you're looking for. You have it in your hands right now. You just haven't used it enough to see the results that you're requiring, whether you accept the fact that that's what you're waiting for or not. Chances are you want to see yourself do something one time, one time where it's rule based. You felt comfortable doing it. It did exactly what you thought it was going to do. And if you have that moment, even if it's in a demo account, if you could just get that one event where I didn't tell you, no one else inspired you to do it, you found it all by yourself, that will be a fact that you'll hold on to. And that would be just enough for you to pursue and keep moving forward. Others may require that same thing, but with a live account. And that's why you foolishly sometimes try to do it with real money or you rush to try to get a combine with it and then try to do the same logic. Once you get funded, should you get funded and you either blow it or cause so much damage that it, it's pointless to consider going forward with it. My son Cameron, as I mentioned, and you've probably already seen, Top Step was very forthcoming with sharing you know, what he was able to do. And he's received two payouts. He passed three of his um, ex express, I, I don't know the exact terms for it, but I think it's express funded account. That is the thing that you get apparently after you pass the challenge. Or combine, or I don't even—I don't, I don't know if they call them combine, combine, but it's the part where if you win in the trade, you don't have the ability to take the money out. And then when you get into the express, my understanding is you're still not trading with real money, but if you ask for payouts, they will pay out based on what you supposedly made. And again, eventually, if they like you as a trader and you exhibit the things that they want to see, they will fund you. And I just saw. Two of my students literally were tapped on the shoulder by Top Step, and now they are funded traders. So, not from my understanding, I'm not, I'm not sure if this is accurate. So, if I'm not accurate, please forgive me and correct me in response on Twitter. But when they say they're funding them, that then now they're in a, a live account where they're actually trading with real money. You know whether that's true or not, I don't know. But uh, it's the tier above Express funded, or what would be considered classically funded, what everybody tries to get to, basically. If you look at the statistics, um, I'm not sure if Michael Patak or uh, Top Step has made it uh, public what the statistics are in terms of the rate of success for people that try to get funded and get payouts. But if you look at the, the numbers that some of the other Forex funded account companies, they have been very forthcoming, which I have a great deal of respect for because uh, they're telling you openly, like you have next to zero chance of doing this unless you know what you're doing you're 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 probably going to fail and when people see those statistics and i gotta be real careful how i say these things because i don't want to sound like i'm pissing all over them and i don't want to sound like i'm propping any of them up or representing them okay uh, what my son did was in and of itself he made the decision to do that i didn't inspire him to pick any one particular company he picked top step because he saw the ads on YouTube. 
So that's the one, like anything else, you know, when you think of something, um, when you think of uh, a plumbing problem, you know, what do you think of in the United States? Roto rooter. Okay. It's the, it's the shit, right? Well, I, I don't use Roto rooter, <laughs> by the way. That's really probably not a good example. But when you think of something, you know, whatever's been advertised and put in front of you because of what I talked about in the live stream is priming. Okay. And advertising the people that put the most money and capital behind their ad advertising, they're the one that's going to get, you know, the squeaky wheel gets the oil. Well, Cameron chose top step, not because I, I said, pick this one. Cause I never would have picked any of them. I wasn't, you know, I wasn't of the opinion that I wouldn't want my son going that route. You know, I was ready to give him money. And he was saying, I don't want to do it that way, dad. I want to be able to say I did it. And, well, he did, he did it, but his initial soiree with it, where he, I think he failed, I think he told me seven times he tried to pass it and failed, but he was doing everything wrong you know, that you could possibly do. Over leveraging, trying to trade the maximum, no idea what he was doing. Okay. And then we spent about a month of sitting down with these are the rules. These are the rules. Okay. You don't have discipline, but the only way you can forge that discipline is by using these fucking rules, okay? What rules are they? You have to know where you're aiming for because if you aim at nothing, you'll hit it every time. And for some of you, that went right over your head. But you have to have a target. You have to have a target in mind where you're aiming for with, with price. What is it reaching for? If you can't ascertain that by looking at a chart, you have absolutely no business pushing a button where you incur risk even if it's demo, because the outcome is going to be detrimental to your development because you're going to be feeding yourself toxic results that were rooted on no real rhyme or reason or model, but you're going to take it as a kick in the ass. You're going to take it as failure. You're not getting what you want, a dopamine hit. So you're treating it like an ex-girlfriend or an ex-boyfriend that were toxic and they just keep calling you and you don't want nothing to do with them. That's eventually what you'll treat business with relationships. That way you'll have that same thing towards the markets and trading, which is the reason why I talk to you this way. I use analogies so that way you can draw parallels to something that, oh, I understand what that feels like. I don't want that to feel like that when I'm trading. Don't do the shit you're doing. Do the things I'm telling you to do and avoid the things I tell you to avoid. But Here's my son. He's going to go out there and show me. It's just like video games. And he's going to be, you know, Mr. Uh, I am having a senior moment. I can't remember that. Fortnite. Fortnite. Yeah, you know, he's really, really good at Fortnite. And he's really, really good at Call of Duty. Like he's fucking badass. Like he's kicks my ass. He's really, really good. And it, it's it's amazing. He thought that was going to be the same thing for him when he got into this. He has that tenacious, like, I'm going to do it, Dad. And if it's hard, I'm going to be that much more inspired to do it. But then when he got his ass beat trying to do the, the combines and failed the seven times or so that he did it, I watched him. You know, he was sulking. You know, he's just like, you know, you could see it in his face. He wasn't walking around with his shoulders back like he always was. He's, you know, the typical 18-year-old boy, right? That knows everything. And I told him, I said, look, here's the rules. You have to aim for an hourly or a 15-minute high. Which ones are you going to reach for? The obvious one that it's trying to get to. That's all you need. That's all you need, man. That's all you need. And then when you know that, you drop down to a one or five minute chart and you wait for a one or five minute stop hunt that's against that draw on liquidity. So if you're thinking it's going to go up, you wait for a swing low to be taken out on a one or five minute chart. As soon as it does that, on that time frame, you have to wait for if it's a swing low that it takes out, you have to wait for an up-close candle to form immediately after that swing low is taken out. As soon as that happens, then immediately you drop down to a 30-second chart and you buy the first fair value you got. That's easy shit, man. That's easy. There's, there's, there's simple parameters to that. It's based on the market. It's going to gravitate to that higher time frame draw. You just had a stop hunt on a lower time frame. So there should be what? A displacement going towards the next opposing liquidity. That's higher time frame than the one you're entering on, which is 30 seconds, right? Let me just drop my laptop here on one second. 
I only have one laptop, by the way. These fucking people talking about <laughs> I got all these laptops. I got one. All right, so um, the model had rules. You have to do this, do this, do this. And once you have it, whatever your winning trade is, whatever it is, you eat it, you take it home, and that's what it is. Do not re-enter. Well, what is he lacking? Discipline. How does he forge it? Doing it. Doing it and then not doing it and failing and getting the repercussions of it. Okay? That's progress. What happens if he takes a losing trade? He stops. But what if he sees another setup? He can't take it. What does he lack? Discipline. So when he tries to do a second trade and he makes money on it, what does he hear from me? Why are you doing that? But dad, look at what I mean. Why did you not listen? The whole point of this is for you to forge what? Discipline, following a model, because that will yield you the results. You coloring outside the lines is not you following the rules. The wins that you make outside of your model are not to be celebrated. That's you cheating on your wife and getting away with it. That doesn't mean keep doing it. Or it's good because it her feelings didn't get hurt or vice versa. I'm, I'm giving you an extreme that maybe it doesn't fit you in, in a sense of an analogy. But in my mind, you are cheating on the model. You're not giving it time, energy, focus that it requires, that it deserves. I took the time to sit down and write this model up. Gave him the rule-based ideas that he has to follow. Any deviations outside of that, if it's a win, I don't give a fuck about that win. That doesn't matter. That is a losing trade to me. It doesn't mean shit to me. How can you measure that? That's not part of the, the equation here. It's outside of the logic. So you can't champion it. You can't give it its props and say, yeah, look at this. Who gives a shit about that? And that's what some of you might be doing in your early stages of your progress. You're doing things outside of a model. And when you win, it's gain. It's profit. I feel good. Yeah. Woo. This is what I want to do. And to make it feel better, because even though I know I feel a little guilty about it because I didn't really know what the hell I was doing and it worked for me, I'm going to share it on social media. Because if I get some likes, that dopamine hit will overcompensate for the fucking things I'm feeling that are rooted in guilt and reality that it wasn't really rooted on any logic or model. It just happened to work out that time. So the facts are my son beat the statistics. He went out there and not only did he get on the other side of those seven losing attempts to try to get a funded account, he went out there and got three of them all at one time. He, he used all three of them at the same time and then passed them all. Then told me, he said, I want to use one of them and just try to see if I can do what you're saying. Ultimately, he showed progress. He had days where he did what he was supposed to do, but didn't do it all the time. And eventually it caught up with him. And on Friday, he burned the last $800. And his logic was, I don't care because I'm going to start a new one. And I didn't do what I was supposed to do with this one. So I got two payouts. I took something from it in experience and I got paid. So I look at it as it's a win-win for me, dad. I'm like, well, I guess that's a good way of looking at it. But if you don't take what you learned from this one, it's going to repeat itself in the second one and the third one. And then if you blow them, guess what you have to do? You have to start a new one or do something else. So What's your plan? Because I want to trade with one micro contract like you were telling me to do in the beginning. I wish I would have listened to that. But another way, I like the fact that I did what I did because I made $1,540. I got two payouts and I did it all in one month. And for me, that feels, it feels great. And I'm like, I'm proud of you. In that regard, I'm proud. I'm proud that you now are inspired to do it. So the facts are he has now been bitten legitimately. He'll never not trade now. <laughs> he'll never he'll never not want to do this and that's what i want i want all my kids to have that now is 1540 dollars a lot of money fuck no it's not a lot of money literally it's not i spent more than that at target last night buying shit that my wife doesn't need so the point is the 1540 dollars is literally nothing 
But from my perspective as his dad, I see him doing something that I want all my kids to do. What I've spent my entire life in pursuit and perfecting, he did it. He canceled all the bullshit that people say that this stuff doesn't work. That you you have to have an overcomplicated uh, approach that doesn't have any statistical probability and you lose money trading on ICT smart money concepts. My 18-year-old son went out there and literally on his own effort did everything. His own money from his coffee shop job went down to negative balance paying for him in between his paychecks. I did not give him any money. I would not pay him for it. <clears throat> and Michael from Stop Step or Top Step, if you were listening, it's not, it's not a knock against you. It would have been any other company. I would not give him money to do that. I would love for him to prove for at least six months that he's consistently profitable using a demo account. I would have put $50,000 in an account. Real money. I would have done it. No problem. Not, not, not even batting an eye worrying about it. That's the route I was going to go. But he had to prove to me. But he wants to go out there and do prove it to the world type shit, you know, uh, vigilante <laughs> uh, mentor son. OK, <laughs> I mean, he's, he's got it in his head. He wants to do that kind of stuff, which is, I guess, if that's what you need for motivation, whatever. But now he's motivated by something else. So the facts are he doesn't want to worry about what other people think anymore. He wants to get better at what he's doing. He goes, now that I know I can do this and I can see where I messed up. In the days that I went back in when I had already made money, like, for instance, he had 13 days. 13 days of consistently winning. He had it up $180 that day. He said, I just wanted to get it to 200. That's all I wanted to do is just to bump it to 200. 20 bucks, dad. <laughs> I was like, I'm not laughing at you, son, to make fun of you, but I can't tell you how many times over my career when I was trying to just get to that target for the day. And then Murphy's Law comes in. Whatever can happen wrong, it will. Okay? It, it, that, that's exactly what happens. And that small, little, tiny $20 target turns you into a losing day. And if you're weak, if you're not disciplined, that losing trade and that losing day turns into a blown account. And that's exactly what he did. He went to a max loss day, over 20 bucks. Son, that is not failure. That's what everybody goes through. That's part of it. That's a growing pain. Every trader, every single fucking trader, male, woman, child, you know, whatever is human, they're going to do things that they know they're not supposed to do. Okay. As a trader, we know we shouldn't push the envelope and we know. And he knew at the same time because he admitted it. He goes, I knew it's not a big deal, but I just wanted to, to get there. I wanted to get that $200 mark because every day he was striving to get $200 or more. And he was doing it day after day after day after day. But I told him, and I even tweeted two days before he did this. This is the time when you stop. You stop. Sit still. Let the advancement experience, the progress, the money that you've earned, let it find its way in you and relish it. Just really enjoy the fact that you did it. Let there be time between you hitting that $3,000 mark that you were, was your goal. That's great. You already had, you got paid out $740. You know, it was more money than he earns after taxes at his job. He's proven that he can do it. It's, it can be done. He was following the model. But when the small little trivial things come in, these little tiny little, it's not enough. When you're on social media, you give it to the social media assholes. Feed the trolls. Give attention to people. Make it available. Invite other people to give you their advice or uh, criticism. They're always going to be some, some guy just fucking, I read it uh, this morning. I almost went off on him. Tell me your son should have made more money than that. Get the fuck out of here. My, my, my fucking son next year is going to make your whole fucking lifetime of fucking money. Get the fuck out of here with that bullshit. Okay. Believe me, I'm giving him enigma. <laughs> okay. I'm giving it to him. I'm literally going to turn him into a fucking rock star. This motherfucker is going to be absolutely insane. Okay. He's showing me that he wants to do it now. That's all I needed. 
That's all I fucking needed. And now I have it. He's tasted it on his own effort with the least of what I have. The least of what I have. I'm giving him the whole fucking shebang. The whole fucking arsenal. I'm giving him everything. You will know this motherfucker. You will know his name and he will be recognized. The beast will be unleashed. He wants to walk that walk. I'm going to give him every fucking weapon. Tell me what my fucking son should have made. He's 18. One month experience. Beat the statistics in the prop firm industry. Two payouts. Three uh, combines passed. 12 days consecutive, consecutively winning. Had the 13th day in his pocket. If I would have told him that the, the rate or the, the high end was the 14th day watermark that was the high end that top step said since they started doing their live streams no one had done it more than 14 days they, now i'm sure there, there was probably more people prior to that matter of fact there was a guy that uh they were making a record of that he had a, a really good uh, strike rate but was it every single day i don't know i don't recall it that much but he had 13 days and if i would have told him the 14th day if you just do that and go one day past that, you beat it. Like that, you know, if you want to have challenges or whatever, treat it like a video game, like Fortnite challenge or Call of Duty challenge, or whatever. <clears throat> he, he could have done it. He would have. He, I guarantee, you he would have stopped at that one eighty, because it would have, it would have nailed it. Because when he told me he was at one eighty, sent me a tweet and said, or not tweet, text said, "Dad, I'm at I'm, I'm one eighty. And I'm I'm thinking, he's in a trade. He's watching it flash. Uh, I'm, I just here's a smiley face back to you. I'm not trying to control his trades. He needs to do this on his own. And when he wins, he's earned it. When he's lost, he eats it. That's the facts. Some of you don't want it that way, but that's the way it needs to be. So in a way, I kind of woke up this morning pissed off, thinking about how I wish I would have told him. You know, all you gotta do is get 15 days. If you do 15 days, you 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 basically smashed everything then. It doesn't matter how much money you made. It doesn't make any difference because you chose the smallest of the, of the challenges. You had a $50,000 account with only $2,000 drawdown. And you had stats that were highly respectable, an equity curve that every guy wants out there. That motherfucker looked like Viagra. It was beautiful. Beautiful. Perfect. Stair-stepping each day. That's exactly what I want to see you trading like, just like that. Not vertical fucking like the backslash on a keyboard. That's my equity curve. If I want to go out there and show you equity curve, that's what mine's going to look like. And you won't believe it. And you know, people will be still talking about dumb shit. But as a brand new one month trader, 18 years old, no fucking experience and just lost seven compines trying to do it with no idea what he's doing. Guess what, Joker? He's done amazingly well. And the experience he's gotten from this is going to serve him exceedingly well. Now he knows this is the tendency I feel when I feel this way. This is what I've done in the past, and this was the adverse result. So therefore, I now have a reason to be apprehensive about doing that impulsive desire. Is it inside my is it inside my model? Is it inside my process, my protocol? What it is I'm doing in trading? Does it fit what it is I try to do as a trader? Is it fit my risk model? Am I allowed to trade that? I've already taken a trade, and even though it didn't hit what I want to trade and reach for the day, the trade is closed. The rules are you stop. You get the fuck out of there. Close the market down, done. You can't look at it no more. Go put your phone in the fucking car so that way you won't be touching it while you're at work. Remember, he's doing this while he's working. Add that. Add that to all this shit. He's doing it on a fucking phone. <laughs> Come on. What a new job. On a new job, a new learning, he's trying to do HVAC. He wants to learn how to do it so he can own it, open his own business doing it. I love it. And he did all that at the same time. So I'm trying to tell you, if he can do it that way, with no extra help from me, there was nothing extra given to him. Nothing. If he can do that, why are you doubting yourself? 
Why are you not willing to sit down and put yourself through the same process? You don't have to do a funded account challenge. You don't have to get funded. Just do it with your demo. Stick to, I already gave you the rest of the year to challenge yourself. Stick to that model. Try to just do that. He aims for 12 to 15 handles. If he can get it, great. And then he wanted to bump up to 20. After a week of that, we were going to do 25. Week after that, we were going to look for 30. Week after that, 35. The goal was to get him to 50. And then plateau there for the rest of the year. Just, just try for that. his inexperience, the, the, the least of room that you could ever possibly have is when you take the money out, they, they put your, uh, their trail at stop loss thing, whatever it is, uh, I think uh, max loss day, something like that. When they stop you from trading for the day, all that changes to, you know, whatever you got left basically. And when he took the second payout, his, his thought process is this, that, I could take more trades with $1,600 in the account left. But what happens if I don't do what I'm supposed to do? I already know it's a likelihood. So it's better for me to take $800 and then do whatever I want to do with the $800 that's left. I got two payouts. To me, $1,500 is a lot. And I did two of them. And it feels good to do that. So that way, it removes any emotions that I have on that last eight hundred dollars because I know I'm gonna I'm gonna open up the two remaining funded accounts that he has that hasn't executed them or or what do you call it, activated them. That's what he intends to do. So he'll have two new ones that he already earned. He didn't work for them now because he lost this one. He, they're in his pocket. He didn't do a linking of all three of them and compound his losses. He made an attempt to go, okay, I'm going to do this. He, he put thought behind it, which I'm proud of. I'm glad to see him do that. Even though he got paid out twice, he burned it. He has two that he can now resume with. He's been paid, so the activation fees he has to pay on them, still he's profitable. Everybody else that tries to do these things can't say that much. That's the facts. So when the facts speak for themselves, that yes, this stuff works. Yes, you can be young and inexperienced and still have a very simple model, but do you have discipline to follow? Do you have the discipline to do what it is you're supposed to do and stop when you're supposed to stop? They bumped him up to five contracts. You can now trade five contracts. And that's what he fell victim to when he was doing his combines. He was trying to do the $150,000 account and he was trading with 15 contracts because it says you can trade up to 15 contracts. He didn't do the math. He didn't think about it. He didn't know with experience the normal volatility of NASDAQ. Man, it can flutter around in seconds, 10, 15 handles and be nowhere still. You can't be trading with 15 fucking contracts, okay? You can't do that. $300 per uh, point or handle in a market that can fluctuate just in static noise, okay? And I said that with conviction. When it's just, just gyrating normally in a one-minute candle, it can flutter around and you can be up or down thousands of dollars. When you don't have any experience or the grasp of money, the value of money. He was just discovering it as an as a employee at a coffee shop. Prior to that, any money he ever had was given to him at Christmas or a birthday. So he, has, he doesn't have any real tangible clue what the value of money is. He was earning that and learning it. And then when you put him into a situation and put yourself in a situation like this, where you have the ability to see Wow, if I close the trade at that moment, I can be up $1,000. I can be up $5,000 in less than five minutes. What's he going to do? What are you going to do? You're going to try to do that every single time. And that's how they get you. That's how this industry gets you. 
That's how your broker gets you. And I'm trying to be the voice of reason and say, okay, there's a day and a time for you to be making $5,000 in trades. There is. It's just not today. You need to be comfortable and humble in the beginning, trading with one micro lot, trying to get those 10 handles. Graduate to 15 handles. Can you get 20? Can you consistently do 20? Each day, can you do 20 handles? If you can do that, all you're doing then is then getting accustomed to now trading with two micros. Now it's $10 per point if it's an ES or $4 if it's a NASDAQ. But I can't get rich that way. Who the fuck says you can't get rich? Who said that? You just did. Nobody else told you that. You got in your head that you need to be rich overnight. And nobody's doing that in trading anyway. Why the hell do you think you're going to be the one that's going to do it? Listen, all the Lambos, all the Lexus, Mercedes, Benz, the bullshit Audis, all that stuff, you can lease them for pennies on the fucking dollar and have a write-off. Okay? All that stuff is easily obtained. You don't need to have that to encourage you as a trader to get the attention of other people. Oh, you're a trader. Look at that. Look, you're driving a leased vehicle. And there's nothing, there's no knock against a lease. When I was running the mentorship, my Corvettes were being, well, let me put it this way. The 2019 was a lease. When I finished the lease, I paid it out. I own it. That's why it's still here. I got it in 2018. Guess what, folks? If it was a lease, it would have already been turned in, and it's still here with me. I own all my cars. But that lease allowed me to write off $1,300. 100% write off. You as an uh, employee of whatever company you work for, your car payment, your car note, you have to eat that. That's not a write-off for you. It's what you do with your money. How are you? Are you financially literate? He's illiterate. He's learning literacy okay, with money. He's learning it. My son will be making lots of money. My son will be a multi-fucking millionaire from his own trading. So don't give me your fucking report cards of what he should be doing and what he should have done in one fucking month. Okay, one month, he's already kicked the shit out of the statistics in the prop firm industry. He literally beat its fucking ass. Now, I'm sorry, that's not what this Twitter space is about, but it just it got under my skin. Like, who the fuck are you to even comment on my son? But nonetheless, <clears throat> when you do the things I'm telling you to do and you subscribe to the the mindset I'm trying to cultivate in you, okay? Uh, outwardly, if you're first time coming to a live event here and you're listening to me, it sounds abrasive. It sounds toxic. It sounds toxic masculinity. <laughs> uh, I don't wear a MAGA hat, okay? I didn't vote for Trump in case you're wondering. But uh, I do believe in the Constitution and anything that goes on right now today that's not Constitution, I think should be abolished and the people should be taken out of the office. And that's the extent of that. I put that in there because I know some of you are probably wondering, what do I, where do I stand and you know, all that shit. Uh, I don't want to have a political slant when I'm talking to you, but the facts are this. When you submit yourself to a rule-based idea, you now have a, a Petri dish that you've placed yourself in. And it's a, con it's a controlled environment that you're willingly placing yourself in. You can walk out of it anytime you want, but to do so exhibits what? A lack of discipline. The whole point is for you to develop discipline. How do you do that? By placing yourself in a role-based controlled environment. You can only do this, you can never do this, and you can only do it this time and never that time. You can only look at this market. You can only do this in price when it does this. You cannot do anything else. Once you press the button one time, when you get out of that trade, whether it's good or bad, you cannot press that button again until another 24 hours have passed. So do you have the discipline to do that? My question today is, do you have that discipline to do that? For at least 20 trading days. Some of you can't even do it one. And I know I was like that. I know exactly what that feels like. It feels like I could be doing so much. This is so counterproductive. 
This is counterintuitive. I should be doing it. No, 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 no. You want to learn how to make money. You want to learn how to trade. You want to learn how to trade consistently. You want to be able to control your emotions, control fear, greed, FOMO, all that stuff, all those things. You're worrying about all those things. And I'm telling you how to defeat all that stuff right here. My son encountered all that stuff. He saw what it looks like to have money flashing in those trades. And he didn't close them when he felt like he should have. Greed was touching him and saying, you're on a roll, boy. Push your edge. You know it's going to go right up there. You know it's going to go down there. And if it does, you're going to make $1,000. Your dad's going to be so proud of you. He's going to put your ass on Twitter. You're going to be on blast. Imagine how good it's going to feel. And $1,000. It's $1,000. Don't you want to make that $1,000? Come on. Hold it a little bit longer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The rules say to close it right here. But take the limit order off. Take it off. You don't need that. It's holding you back. It's holding you back. Go a little bit further. Just a little bit further down the road. That's where the better destination is. That's where all the cool cats hang out. There it is. It's over. Shit the bed. Trade turn around. Reverse on him and become a losing trade. How many times have you been there? <laughs> How many times have you heard that voice whispering in your ear? Shh. Don't, 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 don't close it. Don't, don't do it. Don't close the trade. Go for more. Yeah, you didn't think about that before you put the trade on. But look, you're smarter now. You're in the trade. <laughs> yeah, you're smart now, aren't you? The only thing smart is your ass. It hurts, doesn't it? <laughs> the facts are you have to submit yourself to a whole lot of uncomfortable things, and you have to defer gratification. And that's what makes this hard. It makes it so hard because you want to have something to hold your hat on, to cling to as a reason to keep going. OK, and the fact that you're progressing and doing things in a controlled environment and you're not losing the discipline, you're not doing things recklessly, you're not demanding it to do more than you want it to do. And being content with that, that is progress, that is immaculate, that is impeccable, that is the the the, the cream of the crop type of progress that you want to hold on to throughout your entire career. Because, number one, it's realistic. It's required to be having any longevity in this industry. You have to be absolutely dialed in and filtering out all these intrusive thoughts of doing things that's outside your model and not allowing for circumstances that are outside of your model to yield a profit that you can't boast about, that you can't champion. You can't parade around and say, look what I did. Like Tom Hanks in the, the movie Outcast, where he gets up there and he makes fire for the first time and he starts beating his chest. Look at me. I made fire. Ooh, you know, funny scene, great scene. But that's exactly what it feels like when you make money and you don't know what the fuck you did it for. Like, how'd you do that? I don't know, but it's burning. It's fire. It's lit. <laughs> it's, you, you don't look for anything to make yourself feel good about that thing. But when you take a step back and think about what you did to get there, how did it happen? I can't replicate that. So therefore, why are you bragging about it? Tell nobody you did it and tell yourself in your journal, this doesn't count. I should not be doing these things and I'm going to refrain from doing that. That's not beating yourself up. That's scolding yourself without having a, any negative connotations added to it. Very, very critical. You're going to do it, folks. It's human nature. We're going to do it. I am an um, I am a, a very monogamous man. Okay, I, I've never went out on my wife. I would never do that. Okay, I am a man, true and true. I literally can appreciate a very attractive woman. And truth be told, she's caught my eye wandering into the southern hemisphere of a woman that may be attractive that walks by. I'm not looking at it and oogling over her, but it's just the way it is. A dog's a dog, right? It doesn't mean I'm going to go after her. It doesn't mean I'm going to pursue it. it. Doesn't mean I'm going to give her the time of day. Or even that it would be warranted to do that. But she'll look at me, she'll smile, I saw that. And I'm like, <laughs> it is what it is, right? I mean, it, we're, it, by nature, we're going to do it. Until I get out of this flesh, I'm going to sin. Okay? It doesn't mean because I believe in Christ. It doesn't mean, doesn't mean that I am a Christian. That doesn't mean I'm, I'm walking on water and I'm holier than now. It just means that I have a redeemer and I have someone I can ask to forgive me when I make those mistakes and sin. 
Until I leave this body, I'm going to make mistakes. And as a trader, you are going to do things that you know you shouldn't do or regret that you did it. And experience will teach you don't do that again. Those are the two transactions that you have to submit to and accept the consequences of it. And you can look at them and say, this is enough for me to never want to do it again. And some do that. Smarter people do that. If they know they will never be able to wrestle themselves into submission and build and forge discipline, the best thing you can do is stop and never do it again. Limit your losses to that and just say, you know what? I tried. I learned a lot about myself. I don't have to just want to do that. And if I kept doing it, I would lose more money. That is a win. That is someone that is mature and they understand their limitations as a human being. And they said, this is not for me. There it is. It's done. I'm going to go do something else with my life. And guess what? Life will still continue. It ain't going to, you know, it's not going to put you in the grave. You, just, you can't do this. That's one thing. But as traders, we can't imagine doing anything but this for the rest of our life. And for some of you to have that feeling right now and you haven't found profitability yet or consistency, you've already, you've already subscribed to that. That's your lifestyle now. You're always going to be doing this. You can't imagine yourself never doing this or not doing it rather. That's a characteristic. That's a trait in a trader that needs to be there. If you can't imagine a time when you're not doing this inside of you, that's the person I'm trying to help you cultivate. That's the trader in you. That's the person that is trying to grow. And many of you are stifling that growth. You're choking it. You're smothering it by constantly feeding toxicity to it, worrying about stuff that doesn't help that person in you as a trader grow. You're holding that person back. And it's a perfect excuse why you failed because you're doing it to yourself. Because deep down inside, you don't believe you deserve to be successful. And that's an unfortunate thing. And I had a Twitter space, not a Twitter space, but I did a, uh, a SoundCloud about that. Are you deserving? Because honestly, I didn't feel like I deserved it when I was a younger man. I certainly didn't feel like I earned any right to having this ability. You know, while I wanted to have the better than average lifestyle, um, I, I, I didn't see this type of lifestyle as the goal. I just wanted to not have to earn my job income on a week by week basis working for somebody else once I turned 40. That was that was my goal. And I, I grew up in a very humble environment where my grandfather made 300 hours a week as a a person working in the lumber yard in Essex. You know, he, he worked a forklift and uh, stacked lumber all day. That's what he did. Nobody made a whole lot of money. And where we lived, it was literally called Cardboard City. And it's hard to have a, a perspective about being rich when you come from that, when nobody else around you had that kind of money. My whole area in Middle River was all low income. Many of the people around there, and my mother was one of them, we were on subsidies. We had food stamps. We had all that stuff. And when you live like that, it's real hard to open and broaden your mindset to living an affluent lifestyle. That is what people that are movie stars live. And that was my understanding as a little boy. Only movie stars can live like that. So I'm not a movie star, so I can't accept that. I can't see that happening. But I knew, I'm sorry, I knew, and I know still to this day that I was built differently and I was not meant to be a slave. I was not meant to be prostituted, have my time paid for at an undervalued rate. And everybody that has a job has accepted that. I don't give a fuck what you do. I don't care how much you earn. You can call yourself a professional. You could be a highly productive person in your field. You're still prostituting your time. You're allowing someone else to put a value that they have capped. This is the this is what you're this is the most you're worth to me and you better show up on time motherfucker or you're gone that's how i see a job that's how i see it and that may not be what you see you may see something entirely different you may be you know you're blessed you have a job and blah blah and, that, and i guess in a lot of ways you are because everybody needs to have it in the beginning but to live there and spend your entire existence in that that's not me
And I don't want my sons and my daughter to have that. But they choose the path that they're in because I can't make them a traitor unless they want to be a traitor. Enigma requires effort. You have to think about things and you have to be disciplined and you have to follow specific things or you'll lose money too. It's not an automated thing. It's not something that's going to just automatically, autonomously put you in and you don't have to do any thinking at all. But they had to have a baseline. And the only one of my kids that had the closest thing to it now is Cameron. Caleb changes all the time. He wants to do swing trading. He wants to do day trading. He wants to be position trading. He's still finding himself. Cameron literally walked out there and proved it. Proved it to me that he has it in him. Proved it to me that you know the information is transferable and that my concepts in the hands of a neophyte, no experience, reckless abandonment, <laughs> Not giving a shit what anybody thinks about him. Just going out there and just doing it. And, you know, it is what it is. He did two times what most people can't get one of. He did three times what most people can't get one of. And he did it in one month. After failing seven times. I think that's an interesting number. Completion. So you can... Look at your progress and look for all these things to nitpick and be argumentative and condescending to yourself. Say, oh, well, this is not good enough. Or you can say, you know what? I know more this week, more than I did last week. I didn't crash and burn on this day, on this time. I didn't do that foolish thing that I felt impulsively that I wanted to do. Whereas three weeks ago, I would have. Are you willing to trade with less margin all the way down to one micro contract if it meant that you're going to fix all the problems that you're fearful of and you're spending so much time and energy worrying about right now? What if I can't do it? What if I blow my account? What if I fail this challenge? What if I lose my funded account? What if I do this? What if I do What if you do what I'm asking you to do, which costs nothing? Trade in your demo with one micro lot. Aim for consistency with 10 points. Look and see what it feels like to be with those trades and how little that amount of money is. And condition yourself to see the point values. And then when you get real comfortable with that and you can do it consistently, up it up to one. I'm sorry, one more. So now you're trading with two. And when you get comfortable with that, go up to three. All the way up to 10, which is a standard mini lot. Once you do that, cycle all the way back down to one micro lot. And now try to do it for 15 points. When you do that consistently, go up to two micro contracts and aim for that same 15. What are you doing? You're doing reps. You're doing sets and you're doing reps. You're conditioning yourself. Because none of you are ready to be trading with $300 for fucking point, okay? I don't give a fuck if it's a combine, combine, challenge, whatever. $300 per point, folks. That is size in a, in a market that moves. And when you have no experience and you're limiting it to just, I hope it works out for me, that is not sound logic. That is not what traders do. That's what gamblers do. You're gambling, and I'm, I'm sorry if you want to resist that definition and call it something other than what it is, but that's absolutely what it is. And that's going to hold you hostage, and you'll never be able to hold those long-winning big runners for the day because you're worried about that big win dissolving down into a loss or a smaller win instead of submitting to the idea that the trade is really designed to go here. And it doesn't matter how much I have. I've traded what I could afford. I traded where my sweet spot in equity is. You might discover, no matter how much money you earn, I have students that made very, very huge runs in their equity. Big fucking money. End of working kind of money. <laughs> okay, And they won't trade more than 10 contracts, no matter what. 
they can do a whole lot more. But why won't they go more than 10? Because they don't like how they feel about the trades when they're trading with more than that. That's maturity. That's a disciplined mindset that has went through the processes I'm telling you to do. They went through it meticulously. They submitted, they submitted themselves to it and they discovered that, that little sweet spot where you might only be a three contract trader and you are fucking phenomenal as a three contract trader. Beat the brakes off of everybody else that's trying to trade with 15 contracts. Not that you should be comparing and contrasting. But there are levels to this stuff that none of you are considering. that are going to be highly impactful to you as the trader and how you think. Just because it's available, just because me or someone I, else that might be a student of mine or someone else that doesn't even trade like us is trading with whatever a fuck amount it is, has this much in funding, has this much in payouts. Who gives a flying fuck? You can't spend their money. You're not driving their cars. You're not sleeping in their fucking house. They're not going to do anything for you. They're not going to pay your fucking bills. So you got to find your own way in this. They found their own way and they're comfortable doing what they're doing. If it's, you know, gambling out of their fucking mind and doing high risk all the time and they're comfortable with that, guess what? There are professional poker players that do that and they make their living doing it. Are you a professional fucking poker player? Are you on that fucking final table every fucking year? No. So stop trying to do that stuff in trading. You want it to be mm -hmm. steady eddy. Stuff that just is going to happen and you can trust it. And work towards that each day that you you train yourself and you condition yourself. Do those things in mind. And the facts will speak for themselves. Progress will be measurable. It's not going to be overnight. And it shouldn't be overnight. You can't get comfortable doing things like this that are highly technical, highly dependent on a mindset that is fortified in something that you believe in, that you know will continue. The people that are asking me, is this going to stop working? You're never going to be a trader. You're never going to amount to shit as a trader. As long as you start worrying about those types of things, you're looking for excuses why not to do it. That's what you're really asking me. You're asking me to give you permission to say, don't try. Think about it. <sighs> this is a lot of work. Yeah, I can make a lot of money, but it's a lot of videos to study. It's a lot of things to do. He's asking me to do a lot of stuff. Man, I, I really like my personal time. <sighs> And all the TV shows and the streaming apps that I have, I've watched too much fucking uh, stuff to put this in there. I have no time for this. <sighs> What's the chances that it was not working if all these people start doing an ICT? Is this going to stop working? Are they going to change the algorithm? Yeah, they are. They're going to stop it. They're going to change it right now. Don't bother. Go back to watching fucking you know, Family Fucking Feud. Okay? Go ahead. Dude. Just go back to doing that. Go watch your television. Go listen to the fucking news. Go do whatever you want to do. Waste your time doing other things because this isn't going to be profitable for you. I just saved you a whole lot of time and money. Done. <laughs> but some of you know better than that. And that's who my audience is. So hopefully you found some insight this week with me and learned some things and found some encouragement. I'm going to encourage you to have a very pleasant and relaxing weekend. I'm going to do the same thing now, likewise. And Lord willing, I will talk to you on Monday. Until then, be safe.